Welcome, Welcome to, to Ron, Ron Ron. We drive a lot in LA because everything is really far. We're gonna be efficient and use this driving time to give you guys some advice on things about life. And today's topic is... Dating. Dating. We can give some good advice on dating. I think so. We dated for over four years four before years. we got married, so. We definitely have some experience. Make sure to subscribe to our Ron Ron channel and hit the bell button so you don't miss anything. Also, follow us on our Ron Ron Instagram because that's where we asked you guys some questions for dating advice, so let's get into it. We're gonna go get coffee, is that okay? Yeah. I need my coffee. If I'm gonna give good advice, I need coffee. Okay, we can do that. Okay. How to end a date if you're not feeling it right from the beginning. I love you guys, by the way. Wow. I can't answer this one. I'm the guy, I, I won't end a date early, even if it's going horribly. I'm like very hopeful that maybe something's gonna turn it around and I just can't be mean. I think honestly, it's kind of one of those things where, cause I'm in the same boat as you. When you're in the situation, like if it's not going well, I stick it out to the end. Cause I don't want to be that person. But then how do you end the date early? You know what? It takes two to tango. So if the date's going horrible, half of it is your fault. <gasps> <laughs> I'm just being honest. So why not take the opportunity to try and change it instead of wanting to give up on the date? Why not just make it work out? Like, hey, if things aren't going right and play and like you're going according to plan, change your plan up. Go scuba diving. I'm so sorry. I don't think we had good advice for that. I gave great advice. Should I step out of my comfort zone to ask someone out or wait for them to ask me? And then they put in a parentheses, girl. Because you don't have to go all the way out of your comfort zone. I think you could like show more hints and show more interest and like kind of do things. But if you don't want to make that first move, I don't think you have to. No one's telling you you should, but you could. As a guy in that situation, on behalf of all men out there, personally for me, you should. As example, I didn't know you liked me for the longest time until Swoozy was like, are you crazy? She likes you. I mean, she says she made moves. I don't think she made moves. But if you would have been like more out of your comfort zone and be like, hey, I like you, then we might have started talking sooner. I did what I was comfortable <laughs> with, okay? What were you? You said you touched my knee with your knee. I was leg touching. It wasn't knee touching, it was leg. I was so close to the point where it was uncomfortable comfortable and he thought I had personal space issues but I did that's beside the and point. she does anyways as you guys can see I am the overthinker and he is just straight to the point it's nice to overthink and prepare but at the end of the day maybe just go with your gut they agree with me <laughs> okay another question let's see mm -hmm. if we can get this before we order our drinks I have a crush on someone but he thinks we're just friends what to do mm, what I would do it doesn't work and it's not as obvious. I thought leg touching was a very big obvious thing. <laughs> I even have the photo of the position we were in, in that chair, at that hotel room with everyone. Mm -hmm. I have that photo where I'm like sitting next to you and I'm like, we're like together. I have the proof. I don't know, but I will say to that one, that's a little tough. Yeah. Because you don't want to ruin your friendship. Because right. what if he doesn't feel the same way? Right. But it's also not healthy to hold on to those feelings. Yes. Just let him know how you feel. If you're really best friends, then I think it'll work out. Because you're saying there's a chance that he could like you back, and he but could he's be. just playing it off as friends because he doesn't know that you're into him. So he's just trying to be like. He could be just as oblivious as mm. I was. And you could be missing out on something. Mm. And I say, if you really feel like it's the one, you should go for it. Next question. How to protect your heart, but not create a wall while getting to know them. Did you think I had like walls when you first met me? Yes. What kind of walls? Just a lot of walls. I mean, you did say no to me multiple times when no, I asked you out. No, <laughs> why does this always come up because in videos? Because that's the perfect definition of walls. True. In a relationship, when you're starting to talk to someone, there's always going to be that risk that your heart is going to get broken. But I think there are some things you can be cautious about. You can like ask certain questions and see what they, how they respond to it. And then you can know like, okay, well then maybe I will raise the wall a little higher. <laughs> For me, you know, like in video games where you have like this obstacle you have to cross, but you have to get these questions right. And then along the way, it like slowly starts coming down. I don't think you need to completely destroy your walls or like completely drop them. But I think you should definitely spend more time getting to know the person, getting like, don't rush things. I know some relationships can move fast and they do well, but I feel like there's more of a chance for a relationship to do better if you just take your time. Don't get me wrong. There are relationships out there that they can just like boom, 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 whatever comes next in a relationship. But I feel like it's better to be safe and just take 
take your time. This is the first time we're really giving advice. You guys let us know in the comments how you think we're doing. Should we ask the drive through person for her dating advice? If you want. I think she saw the cameras and got nervy. She did. Can I ask you one quick question for advice? Sure. What's your tip for moving on from a relationship? Moving on for a relationship? Forgiving them. That's great advice. Yeah. Forgive and move on. Yes. Okay, thank you. What thank was your you. name? Rita. Rita, thank you thank for you, your Rita. advice. Of course. <laughs> Did we have one more? We have one more. Oh, okay. yeah, we have one more. Thank you. I like that advice though. Moving on. Moving on, forgiving. I, you know what? I think forgiving is a very underrated thing to do. It's so hard to do. It really is, but it is forgiveness is great. Thank you. Have a good one. <laughs> thank you. You thank too. You. Bye. I do remember one hack to forgiving quick. Oh. Usually the situation is you're mad at them. You hate them. They did something to you that made you angry. They hurt you in some way. Yes. Something along those lines. Sure. <laughs> if you don't forgive them, you're letting them have real estate in your head or your heart. Some people are like, I, why should I forgive them? I shouldn't give them that satisfaction. But it's like, you're not. You're giving yourself the satisfaction of just forgetting about them. And you can like on. spend your time focusing on a better relationship or a hobby or something else. Or your dog, if he's a pug named Guppy. <laughs> How does one acquire Riz? Especially as a more subtle way. First of all, mm. I am like out of the times. What is the definition of Riz? Riz is basically just slang for having charisma. I say just working on yourself. I say reading, getting out mm. there more, learning more. Work on the brain. Because some of the most charismatic people are just very smart. They spend time working on themselves. If you want to be funny, read some funny books, watch some funny things. Funny people have charisma. My boyfriend and I I are going to separate colleges two and a half hours away any long distance dating advice i haven't really ever done a long distance uh, relationship actually i kind of did it was like right out of high school to be honest it was really hard and so i kind of gave up <laughs> but i was also a sophomore in high school i was like 16 15. how can a 15 year old do long distance relationship when you're older it's a little easier because you're more mature and you have the patience at least you're two and a half hours away and you're not like across the country. That's true. So you can see each other on the weekend. I would mm -hmm. say keep in touch, but don't be too overbearing. Overbearing stuff. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? That's going to be a downfall. So definitely give each other space, but communicate. Communication's huge. Um, instead of asking what they're doing all day, like, oh, what are you up to today? And then that way you kind of have an idea just in case you are that person who's kind of like paranoid that they're gonna, like going to be cheating on you and stuff. You can have an idea of what they're doing throughout the day. Yes. Like, two hours so is not bad. You get their location on. Okay, so hold you on. You can see where they are no, at no, no, all no. time. My boyfriend is messy and disorganized. Don't like it. How do I tell him without offending him? Oh. <laughs> I don't know if we have anything relatable with this. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know why, but trash corner just keeps popping up in my head. Trash corner? Trash corner. If you guys don't know this, when me and Ronnie first started dating, she doesn't have it anymore, or at least I haven't seen it, or she's gotten better at hiding it. She used to have what she calls her trash corner. <laughs> In our bathroom, whenever she had trash, instead of putting it in the trash can, she would just put it in the corner. And after a while, that became the trash corner. Don't expose me like this. If already, it's been exposed a long time ago. You always bring it up. But I will say, and I think I have good perspective on this question. First off, you have to make sure you're clean. Because if you're not clean and you, you make a note about somebody else not being clean, it's not gonna work out. You That's need to be true. clean, show by example. Yes. Is what I first recommend because after a while they start feeling bad about their trash corner or trashy situation and then they start putting effort into it. I just said, don't become their parent. That's the only thing I would recommend not mm. to do. Like you're in a relationship, your partners, like one-on-one, -on -one, you don't wanna call like, you should do this, you should do this. You don't wanna be the parental type at least early on in a relationship. Later on, maybe. As part of the messy people community, I feel like we all can accept that we're messy, so I feel like it's not that big of a deal to like, hey, like I've noticed like you're kind of messy. If they get mad, then I don't know, that's kind of a, a bad sign. Also, I will say it's something you have to accept from the beginning because there will be moments where they relapse and they will become messy again and Trash Corner will begin to arise. He doesn't want a relationship, but wants to hug and kiss and stuff. What do I do? Ugh. Uh oh, I'll let Ronnie answer this one. Oh, what are your thoughts though? I don't think you should know. If you're wanting the same thing, then yes. But if you're not wanting the same thing, do not do that. Don't fall for it because then your feelings will go deeper and theirs will not. And you will just be broken hearted by the end of the day. Me and Ronnie were on the same page about wanting something serious. And what was it you always said? Dating 
Um, you date to marry. There you go. Boom. You date to get married. You get to know someone. How do you balance dating with your everyday responsibilities? How do you keep it fun? Work, mm. work, 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 work. You have to be understanding. I only saw Ronnie on the weekends. This is true. Which is why it was a big deal when I surprised her, when I asked her out for New Year's, is because I didn't know that much of her family. When you get into a relationship, you have to not only accept who they are, but accept the circumstances that they are dealing with in their life, whether they're at school, working a full-time job, like you just have to accept all of that. They, they're just not gonna drop everything for you right away. It's right. not realistic. That's very true. Because mm -hmm. I feel like when I first started talking to you, like I really wanted to be like in a relationship, but I also really wanted to prioritize my work. And I feel like sometimes some guys just couldn't understand that and didn't like the idea of not being the priority. And it's not that I wasn't prioritizing you, I just wanted to prioritize all of it. And so, like you said, it does take a lot of understanding for sure. If you want it to work out, it's gonna take work. So you are going to have to not only keep up your daily work life and stuff, but communicate with that person, go on dates with that person, get to know that person. But I mean, if you're in a situation where you're like, I can't do that, then you probably shouldn't be looking for a relationship. Where are we? Where are we? Old, Old place? place? What are all these Cornell? vintage cars? What is happening here? I don't where know. did they you KC. lead us? I don't know. So Aaron got us lost, but it's okay. We found like this really pretty view right here and we took some photos. It's all part of the plan. <laughs> you can okay? go. This look. is what you do for Riz. You can, you, 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 oh, you, bunny, oh. little baby bunny. Sorry, oh, okay, that's yeah, like. Yeah, see, it's all part of the plan. I hired that bunny to do that. Why is it harder to date in your 20s than your teens? Asking for a friend, me. I feel like you have really good advice, Aaron. I I've do? never really seen you like be like this. I mean, I know you've given me great advice, but like, I've never seen this side of you for like other people. Maybe you should ask me more questions. Maybe I should. No, I don't know. But I will say 20s, is because when you're in your teens, you're still growing, you're still learning, there's still True. a lot going on, but when you're in your 20s, you have baggage. Baggage is introduced when you're in your 20s. Yeah. Makes things harder. That's when walls are more developed. It's when things get a little more complicated because you're not just going to school, home, like the same routine, 20s. You're trying to figure out job, you have different stresses in your life, different situations that are weighing in, which makes figuring out a relationship a lot harder yeah. for me personally because high school is i mean when you're in high school it feels like it's so hard it's like oh so many things happening so many things happening but you have it so good in high school at least that's that's it for me i mean unless I, you're bullied all the time like i was and somebody said it, it, i don't even know how to answer this question myself dating in my 20s has been so hard i feel like i got so lucky when i met you oh, like oh, i'm just uh, that's oh, just the kind of true honest because like i know some of my friends who are in their 20s and have had such a hard time trying to find a good person to be with. I think the best advice I can give is to not be so hard on yourself when it comes to finding the right person. The right person will come at the right time when you're least expecting it. Oh. You know what? You should stop living in the past. Ooh. I have the same issue. Don't worry about your 18s. A good relationship is never easy. Right. In your 20s, 30s, 40s, whenever you decide to get into a relationship, they're going to be hard. It's going to take work. It's a commitment for sure. So stop comparing it to your teenage years because that's what I do. I live in the past all the time. I'm like, man, if I would have done this then or did this now. Well, I guess you do kind of do that sometimes. I don't think you really live in the past, but you do bring up stuff that you're yeah, like, I'm like, you kind of oh. like, oh, I wish I could have done something different. I mean, it's good to learn from the past. Don't get me wrong. But to live in the past is something you shouldn't do because you're wasting the now. And before you know it, the now is going to be the past. Yeah. It's anyways, you know what? I, I feel like we should go walk around. So let's end this video. You gave great advice. I don't I don't I usually give you advice. Gave, you gave really great advice, Aaron. Yeah. I'm, I'm proud of you. But I feel like you've always given me good advice. Whenever I had problems, the number one thing I would do is always just go to Aaron first and just talk about it with him. And he was always really great. Good support. But all right. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let us know what you guys think. Let us know if we should do more. Also, go check out our Run Run Instagram to go see the photos we just took. Oh. And TikTok too. Yes. We're going at it. Social media all over the place. Pew, 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 pew. Also, if you have any input and any advice that you think you could give, leave it in the comments below. Mm -hmm. Let us know your thoughts and opinions. Dating is hard, so the more input, the better. Yes. And we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.